Hey guys, want to make a quick video here. This is going to be pretty fast, um, but it's something that I see being done wrong a lot, and it really should be something that's that's very simple once you learn it properly. Um, we all tend to learn it over time. We learn it when we're first getting out on jobs, but it uh, it really should be pretty easy, and that's gaffing cables correctly. Um, it's absolutely a safety issue. It's a safety issue on stage. Um, it's a safety issue with uh, the general public if you're if you're working in especially corporate environments where you may be in ballrooms and things where cables uh, aren't all on stage or backstage or behind the scenes. Um, so let's take a quick look. I'm going to show a couple of uh, couple of examples, uh, just kind of walk through the right way and some of the ways that I see it being done that uh, it causes you a lot more trouble, takes a lot more time, and uh, at the end of the day, really shouldn't be that hard. So let's have a look. So here we are. I'm going to quickly gaff a cable down to the floor. Um, you can see uh, what we're doing here. Regular mic cable. Um, so imagine we got a cable running through an area. This could be anywhere really. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But say we got a cable just coming across our area here. I see a lot of different things going on um, gaff wise that just really are silly and, and take a lot of take a lot of time when they really shouldn't so here we go i like to use pro gaff um it's what i generally see out on gigs um it's what the pros use <laughs> that sounds ridiculous but it is uh it is what you see most of um sometimes what i'll see people do is if this is a cable running through the the stage here You'll get the total amateur hour stuff, and that's when somebody sticks a piece of tape there, and then they might go a couple feet, stick a piece of tape there, and call it call it gaffed. Absolutely incorrect. That uh, that isn't going to stop anything. And in fact, on a dark stage, um, you're creating a trip hazard here. If this is gaffed down well enough, and somebody gets their foot in there, you're you're really going to trip. That's not going to help anybody. You'd be better off almost in uh, in real world experience of leaving it ungaffed at that point, if that's all you have, uh, is a little bit of gaff, you're almost better off just letting it, uh, letting it flop around, um, and not bothering creating this extra, this extra hazard. So the proper way to gaff on a gig, long runs, short runs, doesn't really matter. Um, Usually this is two inch gaff. Now, a lot of times you'll see three inch gaff or even four inch, depending on how many uh, cables you're working with and what the company has in their box. But the correct way to do this is wherever the end is. So if that's the cable going across there and you've got loose cable going up to your microphone on this end. And then this, the other end goes back to a console or a snake. You want to find out what direction. So if you're going straight across here, you want to gaff perpendicular to that. If you're coming this way, you want to gaff perpendicular to that. And I'll show you the reason why you want to do that is because if you gaff perpendicular here, that's going to hold the cable. If you gaff non-perpendicular, when you pull on this, it's going to start pulling the cable up. So if somebody does trip on this or it gets walked over, if you're not perpendicular to the way you're running, um, it's going to start to pull the gaff apart and your gaff job will fall apart in a hurry. So say we're going this way, I'll tack it at one end, then I'll go two or three feet usually is the maximum I would like to do. Um, keeping it nice and straight and I'll just go a foot here just so you can see. But if you're going 20 feet down the wall, every three, four feet or so, depending on how long the run is, you want to tack another piece. Now what I do is I'll put this perpendicular like that. The tack pieces, I will turn sideways. So this is just a tack piece. So this is just holding it in place. And I'll go to the next line, next one down the line, and I'll tack over here. Now you gotta imagine, use a little imagination, imagine there's you know a few more feet in between these. I normally wouldn't tack something this short. What this allows you to do now is this gives you a nice straight run and when you come back over top of it with your actual gaff tape, you can gaff that guy down nice and clean, run both fingers down it, 
and the tack pieces don't stick out. If I had to run these tack pieces this way, you end up with this mess of cross hatching and it just looks awful. So that's really quickly just how you gaff a single cable. So let's imagine we have two pieces of cable, two cables going along. Um, slightly different uh, process. It's basically the same, but just slightly different finish to it. So again, let's do this real quick. Tack perpendicular. Very good. That's going to hold your one end secure. I'm reusing tape here because it's just uh, a demonstration. I don't want to waste a bunch of tape. Tack there, sideways cable, or sideways piece of tape, and then tack third, third piece is tacked. Now, two, three, four cables, however many you got, anything more than one, I would do this method. You want to pull your first piece, and I'm going to show you here. So, see the way I'm off to the side here? Just covering the tops of the cables with that. Second piece. Cover the tops of the other side, just like that. So that way there's two pieces overlapping each other, and that makes a nice barrier. If you can kick that all day long, and it's going to be really hard for it to come up if it's seated right, um, hopefully it gets walked on a little bit uh, before it gets kicked the first time, but man, that is not, that's not coming up. Um, it's not dangerous. That's going to be nice and clean. And if this was in an area where people are walking over uh, access to a stage, I would spike the top of the ridge uh, with white or some other color spike tape just to catch the eye as people are walking past. Um, and then it comes up easily. The trick to pulling gaff tape off, if you haven't learned this already, pull the tape off before you pull the cable up. If you pull this cable up, what's going to happen is the gaff tape will wrap around as you pull it up. And getting gaff tape unstuck from itself when it's wrapped around a cable, oh, just a nightmare. So always at the end of the gig, pull the gaff up first, then pull your cable up. Doesn't matter how many hundreds of feet you have, get the gaff off the cable before you yank the cable up. Um, that'll definitely save you some heartache. And then your cable's nice and clean. There's no funky business. There's no uh, sticky residue left on there from the uh, from the gaff being left on the cable. Never, ever, ever wrap a cable back and send it back to anybody's shop with gaff tape attached to it. That is absolutely brutal, and you might think nobody will notice, but I guarantee people will notice, and guys will be talking. If you're the new guy in the crew, they will absolutely know you were the one that did it. So don't, uh, don't go taking a bunch of shortcuts and... Um, leaving a mess for the next guy. Wrapping cables, cleaning them, making sure they're gaff-free at the end of the gig is super important. It takes a couple minutes at the end of the gig to do it right. Saves you a ton of time when you get to the next gig. Uh, if you've ever shown up at a gig and you find cables that weren't wrapped right, have residue on them, or funky, just aren't unwrapping correctly, aren't laying down right, it eats up so much time on the next gig. So be careful, pay attention to what you're doing on the loadout. Um, and try to do the best job you can for the next guy that's going to use the cable. Uh, that'll definitely get you uh, hired back. So that's it. Gaff tape, proper procedures, proper technique. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.